<laughs> Welcome to Innovision FM. Once again, this is Johnny J, and I am filming this the, the, to, to the day before um, Valentine's Day, so uh, happy belated Valentine's. I'm not sure when this show is going to be on uh, because I, I post them uh, and um, my uh, the TV station, Channel 56, is it's behind because I haven't been able to transfer them, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. So, Channel 56, 8, 8, 8 p.m. on Wednesday nights, you can see the show. Uh, YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, please subs subscribe, because as of now, I have nine subscribers, and I need 991 subscribers so I can monetize this. Um, so, so, so share this with your friends, and if you want, if you listen to this on uh, Spreaker, uh, share this. Uh, I have an Intervision FM on Spreaker, so you know, subscribe to that. What else? Oh, uh, the top 20 countdown. If we're still doing that. Is on uh, channel uh, KVO 92.9 on the FM dial. Oh, before I, I get even further. Our topic today is, should America respect the English speaking population? Or should we still be speaking English here in America? And you, you'll see what I mean when I, I tell you the, 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 the story I'm gonna tell you. Um, okay, so uh, our Intervision Top 20 uh, count, countdown is on KUVO 92.9 on FM Dow, Fridays at 6 p.m. and Sundays at 9 a.m. Uh, you can also um, get it on just InnovisionFM.com. And you can go to our website for more information about our nonprofit, InnovisionRecords.org. Well, um, I, was, I like to you know, surf around and just listen to different stories and Sometimes I'll Google stuff, and, and sometimes people who are, are even better at researching like different interesting stories, I, I just say, okay, this person is talking about this, and that is something interesting. And so out of all the things I heard this morning, uh, in Monta Vista, Colorado, there was a, a, a gentleman, Caucasian gentleman, who belongs to the Elk, Elks Club. And they do bingo to raise money for the for the organization, and and you know little women like it, and uh, mid uh, aged women like it, and sometimes you know mother and daughters they go, and I don't know if too many guys go to this, you know, unless it's, I, I don't know, I, I don't know, but I know a lot of women like this game uh, bingo, and you get your pickles and and you, you buy your tickets and so forth. So, and for those of you uh, who are uh, here in America, you know that America is a English-speaking country, mixed in with a lot of other people that speak their language plus, and then plus others. But when you call, you know, uh, places, they ask you uh, for English, press one. For Spanish, you know, press one, and. I've always wondered, like, well, there's there's Chinese people here, there's Russian people here, there's German people here, there's uh, Ethiopians, Africans. How come all those groups are not represented when they say press one for this, press two for that, press three for that? But I said, okay, it's, it's you know, it's Colorado. It's a lot of places they they for some reason they're they're really catering to the Spanish language and. I must tell you, as a side note, uh, there are some people that are good at, at speaking different languages, and there are people that I know that are very intelligent, they're just not, they just don't have that gift. But if you have that gift of being able to pick up on different languages, uh, I know uh, my wife is very good at that, very good at just different languages. Uh, you know, it amazes me. Uh, when I go to Europe, I, I talk to Africans that they speak five di different languages. And I say, hey, you know, my hat is off to you. God bless you for that. My thing is, I only speak language, and I'm, uh, and I, and I have problems with, with that as far as like spelling and sometimes writing. And 
maybe if I apply myself, but I, you know, I'm up there in age. I don't know how much I'm gonna apply myself when I, I learn this language, but learning the nuances of this language. But I learned enough to to make money here in America. Uh, probably won't, won't make any money in in uh, in other countries. I'll probably never be uh, policy for policy for faith in France or uh, uh, as they were in Spanish. Um, uh, como esta? Uh, and what's that? Oh, placebo. That's about. That's as far as it's gonna go. Okay. So this gentleman, who was a Caucasian gentleman, um, he, this lady came up and she's been in this country for 30 years, uh, and she speaks Spanish, and but she feels more comfortable speaking Spanish than the English. So she came uh, to the table to buy her pickles or whatever they are, and she raised and says, you know, two fingers, and she had the money. And the guy says, well, say, say in English what you want. And so I guess she went back to her daughter who could speak English, and so told her daughter that this guy asked me to speak English, and he's like, you know, you know I know this is America, but they should be able, every, everybody should be able to speak Spanish, and believe me, you know, not everybody speaks Spanish. I mean, that, that's our problem here in the United States of America. And so the daughter, somehow the, the police got involved. I don't know if the daughter called the police. And this is the PC world we live in, politically correct world we live in. So the police comes and they, they give them a ticket, you know, they show up at the court and whatever. And so the fine for asking a uh, another American to speak English in Monta Vista, Colorado, is one thousand dollars if you're found guilty, or or either or ninety days in jail. Not not one day, not not a half an hour. Ninety days in jail. Now I didn't know that this 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 law even existed, and I'm glad that this is brought forth. You know, this this came out because, as I understand it, if you go down to um, apply for citizenship, and you finally get a chance to see the the officer in charge of, of interviewing you, you have to have a, a reasonable amount of English, and uh, but the, you know they will uh, supply you with ways to 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 learn about the history of America. And, and uh, different things uh, through an interpreter and so forth. But when you're sitting one-on-one -on -one there, he wants to see if, if did you communicate well in, in, in this native language of English. Now, I, I definitely want to know, you know, you, you guys, uh, call our number 720-324-7278, 720-324-7278. That's the, phone, the same phone number that you can text uh, the, the nominees or the people that you want to win our top 20 countdown and you can um, you can leave a voicemail in there and, and tell us what you think 720-324-7278 should we as Americans expect other Americans who come to our country who they want to they want all the the perks of being America uh, like Bernie Sanders would say, they want free education. They want free Medicare. Should they uh, be required to speak English? There used to be a time in, in the 30s, and, and maybe we went overboard in, in the 30s and in the 40s, in the 20s, 30s, 40s, when immigrants would come over. Um, these people from the school would come out to the, the parents' house and say, your child must you know, go to school first and they must learn the English language. And the parents were so much wanting the, the, the child to melt in and become a part of the, the American way that um, they had their kids learn English, but then themselves, they, they spoke their language at their house and then the, the kids would interpret for them. And that still happens today, where you know your child knows how to speak English, but your, or, but your, your the parent does not, so that the child is like the the interpreter uh, 
for that parent. Okay, that, so that, that still happens today, but it was, it was more enforcing learn how to speak English if you're in the United States uh, back then. And then let's go way back. Let's go way back and let's, let's see what, where, I, where I'm at on, on this. Okay. Uh, let's go way back. If you remember a movie called, um, oh, what was this movie called? It was called Roots. And they had this character in there called Kuta, Kuta Kende. Kuta Kende. And he just came over from, from Africa and they gave him this name, Toby. And he said, well, no, my name is Kuta Tende. And so uh, one of the uh, managers uh, uh, says, you will say, your name is Toby. Your name is no longer Kutu Kente. And he says, no, my, my name is Kutu Kente. So they strung him up on a string. That's in the movie. This, this most likely happened uh, in real life as well. And the guy, he took a whip and he said, Whoa, what is your name? And he says, Kutu Kente. And he says, Whoa, poo. What is your name? You know, Kute Kente. And then maybe after the, maybe the third or fourth, he says, okay, I've, I've had enough. <laughs> My name is Toby. So, so back in the day of, you know, great America, uh, with the slaves, they had to beat into you the language of the English language, and they had to beat and you um, that your name is no longer your African name but your name is this European name and uh, according to whoever is your master now I because I know you know my last name and I know a lot of people with my last name uh, who are white and black and whatever so I say well my masters must have been that white person who has that last name or maybe you know, you know. so uh, <laughs> so and, and, and how history re repeats itself. So now you're not allowed to string up a um, uh, Hispanic person or, or any other person who can't speak a language and, and whip them into speaking or saying the name is this rather than that. Uh, now we have the politically correct SWAD uh, saying that you must uh, not question this person why they can't speak English after living here for 30 years. And believe me, I, I, I've had, a, had a, I've been blessed to, to be able to go to different uh, countries and stuff like that. And if, if, say, say if I wanted to, 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 to move to Russia and I wanted to, to make a living and I wanted to support my wife and, 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 and make a living and, and, and do what I do here. Well, you know, there's, there's some Russians that you know, they speak English and stuff like that. And we even have, they even have one Russian speaking channel uh, called um, Capital One FM. If you, if you get a chance to, to watch that, it's uh, Capital One. So, so it's, 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 it's very, very uh, interesting that I would have to learn that language in order to, to be somewhat of a success. And here in America, you have to learn the English language to, to be uh, in, the, in, in the English frame in order to be successful. Now, if you can work at a, a, a Spanish radio station, hey, learn Spanish. If you learn if you're in Los Angeles, if you're gonna work on a, a, a Japanese American station, you, I mean, you learn Japanese language. I mean, only like in, in Los Angeles and New York is it diverse that you can actually turn uh, the, 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 the radio dial and hear other languages in America other than your language. And I understand that in Los Angeles there's a, 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 there's a, a, a large immigrant, uh, immigrant group that, you know, if they're Spanish, you know, they have these, well, even in Colorado, or if they're Japanese, uh, or if they're uh, German or or they probably even have some Ethiopian uh, channels that they, I mean, we even have one here in Aurora that they speak mostly in Ethiopian language.
Okay, so you have those challenges there, but the predominant uh, language is um, English. And uh, I, somebody uh, told me, and I don't know if I want to tell I guess if, you, if you're in Sweden, they'll give you one year to learn the language, and then and they'll speak to you in English for one year. But once you pass that one year mark, they no longer speak to you in English, and you have to climb and, and get and learn that language because they say, hey, this is our language. We're proud of it. We want you to learn. Now, of course, you know, uh, as the Democrats and, and the far left uh, and the communists uh, resume, of uh, Bernie Sanders' crew, of course, they don't want uh, people to Americans to be proud to be Americans. They don't. They don't want us to to build upon what we're, what we're doing here and make it even better. They said, no, it's it's terrible. We have to disrupt it. We have to tear it apart. And so, if you're Bernie Sanders' uh, follower out there, okay, we know where you are. You know, uh, you like uh, 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 change by uh, force. Or you're doing what uh, what what Hitler did. Uh, he got enough people to agree with him, got into the political party, and then he changed it from within. And I know, uh, like uh, a lot of uh, uh, Muslim people, they who wants to change the regime, the regime, different countries, they go in and they take over politically, and then they say, okay, our rule, Shari rules, rule. And even in America, there's some hotels, there's uh, 7-Elevens that. Uh, they're under Sharia law in the United States of America, but the Sharia law uh, will not uh, be will never be compatible to the Constitution because uh, in the Sharia law there's no freedom of speech, there's no uh, freedom of who you are as an individual. You must uh, act and speak as the clan, not as a individual. So when this happened in Monte Vista, uh, and, and hopefully this this will you'll see this before the before April the 21st, uh, this man is is, is uh, said that he, they want him in, in court on the 21st of April. Uh, so he will either uh, you know get lawyer, lawyered up, and there's already like a a, a, a Muslim uh, legal group that's coming, uh, which I'm not sure what the, what. what what they have to do with this because this is a Spanish lady and and they are saying you know this guy he violated the rights of this uh, this uh, Mexican American because he asked her to speak English so hopefully this guy will get lawyered up lawyered up and it's a shame that he has to defend his right as an American to ask someone to speak English right but this is the victim politics that we have nowadays in the United States of America. Uh, if you're a victim, hey, hurrah, hurrah. Now we want to celebrate that and we want you to, to vote for us because we're a party of, the Democrats are a party of victims. So if you want to be a victim, you join the Democratic Party and uh, they will celebrate you. And, and uh, oh, oh, and I got to tell you about this video. It's, it's, it's out there. So in this college, it was this um, diversity um, uh, gathering. It was a diversity gathering. And this, I, I can say this because I'm black. This idiot black young person said, excuse me, excuse me, everybody. This is a, this is a diversity um, meeting and there's too many white people here. I don't think you heard me. This young idiot black girl in college yelled, uh, yelled, got the people's attention and said, excuse me, this is a diversity meeting, but there's too many white people here. And there were some people that even applauded this, this idiot. You, in America, you have the right to say stupid things. I mean, that's that's your first amendment. You have the right to say stupid things. And maybe she wants to go back to segregation, where where there is uh, where there's like 
colored only signs and, and whites only signs. Uh, maybe her, her, her parents, maybe they're just as much of idiots as, as she is, didn't tell her that there used to be a time uh, that the Democrats uh, created this thing called Jim Crow law that said that, you know, whites over here, blacks over here, if you if you do come together, you gotta only drink at this fountain, you gotta, you gotta eat uh, in, the, in the back uh, of the restaurant, not, uh, we, we'll hand the food out to you, but you can't come in here. Now that was uh, Democratic Jim Crow, and I guess because uh, black people have gone with Democrats for the last 60 years, we're becoming more idiots. <laughs> As, as far as we're becoming more um, oh, complacent to what the Dissocrats, and if you don't, if you've never heard that word Dissocrats, uh, look up Malcolm X when he talks about there's Democrats and there are Dissocrats. Dissocrats were conservative uh, white people who believed in separation. Right? And they say, well, you know, that separate equal, equal, but we learned that separate and equal wasn't. Uh, uh, wasn't too equal, right? And then, of course, uh, their party being the party of 1826, the ones who started the KKK, of course. I always want to remind you of this because sometimes you, I know you guys are not learning this in school. And if you are, you're learning the very watered-down version and the teachers are not going to tell you that uh, the Klan and uh, Jim Crow laws were started by Democrats. Yes, Democrats. Uh, also, they're not going to tell you that the Republicans, uh, Abraham Lincoln, when he said he was going to free the, when he freed the slaves, he says, okay, it was a it was a law in the South by the Dissocrats and the Democrats that said it's a it's illegal to teach a black person to read and write because then they can compete if they can read and write and understand what you understand, then they're going to question and, and 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 all this stuff, right? So. When Abraham, when Abraham Lincoln said that you free the slaves, they said, "Okay, we're going to free them, but we're going to, you know, it's now legal to teach them how to read and write, to teach them to give them, a, you know, we're going to give them a piece of land. That's where the 40 acres and the mule came from." But the Democrats said, you know, after he was assassinated, the Democrats said, "said Hold up, now remember that. Hold up, uh, the next episode, uh, Dr. Dre album." So the Democrats said, hold up. <laughs> we said, no, we don't want these blacks to learn how to read and write. We don't want them to have a piece of, piece of land. And so therefore they, they developed the, the Jim Crow laws, uh, the separate but equals, equal. So okay, we have to teach them, we're gonna give them torn up books. We're gonna give them the secondhand uh, uh, things that we're not gonna uh, pay their, their teachers the amount that we pay the teachers over here, we're not going to uh, provide uh, decent uh, school facilities like we provide the ones over here. And that was your lovely Democrats who did all that. And so I don't understand that in the 1960s, uh, uh, how even even whatever happened, whatever rip happened between you and the Republicans, that you would step over and say, well, let me, let me get in the enemy, the enemy's camp and let me follow these people. Now, if you're Democrat and and you're not you're not a politician and, and you don't believe in you're, you're either a progressive or whatever, you, and you don't believe in this this, this craziness that these Democrats believed in, or you, you're not uh, uh, these racist uh, uh, Democrats as they're pointing fingers at Republicans, and they're really really pointing fingers at Republicans because they're saying this is who we are. But if, but if we put that jacket on you. If we say it enough, we got the news media, we got the television, we got Hollywood. If we say it enough, then people and these these blacks who are probably not as educated, Hispanics who are not as educated, they'll start believing our lies. And they'll start thinking, and I have people in my building, uh, Mr. Roundtree, for one, I go, he says, I don't care what you say, he's a racist. And I said, well, what evidence do you have? What has he done to you personally? Well, he's still a racist. And then you got Bernie Sanders saying, we're gonna, the economy is great. Uh, uh, people are getting jobs. We're gonna change that because this is not the economy that we want. We don't want people having jobs. We don't want people having uh, individual freedoms. We don't want, 
a lot of things that are are happening that's positive for this this, this uh, United States of America. We wanted to become a Venezuela where we we the elite Democrats are in power, and we point down to you and we tell you what we want you to do. And if you don't do it, we will force you to do it by either taxing you or since we'll have all the weapons, we'll come in and we'll do it by force. Just like good old Venezuela, right? So, uh, so I hope uh, you lazy, if you're lazy Republicans, get off your butts and, you know, and vote, 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 vote. Because uh, in Colorado, we got crushed because we had we had we, we picked this uh, Stapleton, and we let uh, the the Democrats put a jacket on him, and say that because his his great grandfather was was a member of the Ku Klux Klan and was in a part of the Democratic Party, that he must be what his great great grandfather was, and so you have an opportunity, Republicans, speak up, say what you're about. Uh, Shape it in such a way where people can understand it. You don't have to be a Donald Trump, but just be you, right? And don't be afraid to speak your mind. Don't be afraid to be a conservative. If that's who you are, you know, be be who you are, all right? Anyway, this is Intervision FM. We reminded you, subscribe, hit that subscribe button. Uh, hit the, the notification bell if you're watching this on YouTube. And uh, donate to our nonprofit organization, InnovationRecords.org, uh, or go to PayPal.me slash Intervision Denver and uh, support our nonprofit organization. We're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We work with physically challenged musical artists to teach them the business of music. So, until the next time, God bless.